Hey guys, so we're going to be using the pressure prism method on a vertical submerged surface in this video. So here's our example. We've got a pressurized tank with air on the top at a pressure of 100 kPa. And below that there's oil. And we're asked to find the magnitude and location of the resultant force on the attached square plate here in the above pressurized tank. So this is a square plate. We've been asked to find the magnitude and location of the resultant force on only that plate. So because it's a vertical submerged surface, we can use the pressure prism method. Um, it's only because it's rectangular. If it wasn't rectangular, um, it's best not to use the pressure prism method. So we've been given the specific gravity of oil, which is equal to 0.9. And if we look at that in close up, this is the situation we have. Um, so there's an initial pressure at the top because the vertical surface is below the surface of the fluid. It doesn't start, start off at zero pressure distribution there. There is a pressure there. Um, and we've got to consider this in two parts. Because we have an initial gauge pressure of 100 kPa, um, our pressure distribution at the very top of the fluid starts at 100 kPa. So as we move down through the fluid, the pressure um, increases linearly, as we've got here. But because there's a 100 kPa gauge pressure at the top, we've got an initial gauge pressure there, um, which we have to add because at the very top, um, there is a pressure of 100 kPa. So we know that our H1 is 2 meters. So 2 meters from the top of the fluid to the top of the square plate that we're considering. So H1 equals 2 meters. H2 is 2.6 meters. Uh, because the square plate is 0.6 uh, wide and high. Our uh, Y1, so this is that's the height from the top of the plate to the centroid of the square, um, is going to be half the height of the plate. So that's 0.3 meters. And our Y2 is going to be two thirds of the height um, of the square plate, which is 0.4 meters. Now we know that using the pressure prism method, um, 